welcome to Conversations on EU Pharma, a podcast by Medicines for Europe, where we discuss the challenges, opportunities and solutions for better health and better access for patients in Europe. Today, we're discussing the role of biosimilar medicines and how that can assist patient care and those with non-communicable diseases, which are very prevalent and very burdensome in Europe. I'm very pleased to be joined by two experts from the nursing community today who I'll ask to introduce themselves. So maybe Adriano, would you like to say a word of introduction? Well, hello everyone. My name is Adriano Friganovic. I'm a president of the European Specialist Nursing Organization. I'm a critical care nurse. I work at the University of Applied Health Sciences and the University Hospital Center Zagreb as a head nurse of the Department of Anesthesiology and Intensive Care. I have a PhD in public health And I also serve as a president of the World Federation of Critical Care Nurses. I'm very happy to be here today with you. Great. Thank you, Adriano. And Hanneke? Hello, everyone. I'm Hanneke Vornefeld. I work as a nurse practitioner in an outpatient clinic in the Netherlands within the field of rheumatology. And we do a lot of work with biologics and biosimilars. And we did some research on changing from originators to biosimilars. So I'm very pleased to be part of this conversation. Thank you, Anka. I'm very happy to have both of you with us today. I think if we jump straight in, I'd like to maybe start. Both of you are practicing nurses within a hospital in your respective countries. And I'd really like to start by asking, you know, from the nursing perspective, how is the situation in the hospitals now from, you know, recovering from the pandemic and trying to rebuild patient care? How has this period of time impacted the nursing community from your experience? Maybe, Adriano, could I start with you there? Yes, of course. Well, COVID-19 pandemic changed the world and closed us in our primary settings, countries, cities, hospitals. Pandemic had a great influence to all healthcare systems, whether developed or not developed. Due to the fact that we didn't know a lot about the virus, there was a fear among healthcare workers and that complicated things. Nurses were at the front line and we were forced to educate non-critical care staff to provide critical care for respiratory patients. As ESNO and nursing organizations, we try to share knowledge and to help each other because even we are close, the only thing we could do was to share knowledge and share information among us to assure adequate resources for caring the patients. Even we were shut down, even we were closed, we helped each other to survive this crisis. COVID-19 definitely will have a long-term consequences to mental health of the nurses. And there are some studies ongoing and conducted. And for the future, we have to take care of this. On the other hand, because of the pressure of infected patient, there was a lack of time and human resources for non-COVID patients. And that will also be challenged for the future and maybe long-term consequences for the healthcare. Yes, that's very interesting. Also in the role of the European organization in that time to really collect information and to share, although you could not connect in person across Europe. So that's also very interesting. Hanukkah, from your perspective, has the pandemic maybe triggered some changes in your practice or were there, let's say, disruptions at the time in your care of patients with rheumatology diseases? Well, a lot changed in the past two years. Of course, there was a lot of nursing shortage. So some of my colleagues had to work in other wards. Normally we work in the outpatient clinic, but they had to assist on the ICU or on the COVID wards because there were not enough nurses or nurses got sick. And we at the outpatient clinic had less nurses to do the work for our rheumatology patients. And not all our patients could come or there to come to the hospital. So we changed to telephone consultations and try to give our patients confidence that we could give the best care. Uh, We got a lot of questions from patients using immunosuppressive medication, like biologics or biosimilars, if they could keep on going with their medication because of the COVID and they were afraid to get more sick. And later in the COVID pandemic, we got problems with shortage of medication 
Yeah, that's really interesting. And I think another thing that really stuck out to me, and I think it also relates to what you said there about the patient rights, is that you both mentioned, I think, issues around shortages, either shortages of colleagues and staff, shortages of medicines, of things that you needed to be able to treat your patients. And so I think what I hear from both of you is that there's more and more and more intense pressure on the resources that you have, or maybe you're expected to do more with less resources. Is that fair, Adriano, from your perspective? Well, from my personal experience, we didn't have that kind of problem because I work at the largest hospital in the Croatia and we were very supplied. Maybe there's a problem with the nurses staff and sometimes we couldn't have enough nurses educated for the critical care patients, but to other hospitals in Croatia and regarding my information around the Europe, there was a problem with supplies and the staff as well. And of course, it's not fair because we had to provide quality of care and take care about that. Yeah, perfect. And so I think maybe moving on from the COVID experience, I think some of the issues that you've experienced through this time are probably maybe some that have been facing your community beforehand, but certainly, you know, require some attention in the future. I think one thing that stands out to me is that the role and the tasks of the nursing community expand far beyond, say, managing the patient care or the patient treatment or working exclusively with the doctor. The traditional role of the nurse has really evolved beyond what we would think of before. So how do you both see that evolution of the profession and how is it moving forward, do you think? Maybe, Adriano, I would start with you. From my perspective, future of the healthcare will be in the nursing specialization. It would be impossible in the future to educate generic nurse. There's also some challenges and the needs for adequate recognition within the European society and European Union. Yeah, thank you. And Hanukkah, your perspective on the evolving role of the nurse over time? What I see in the Netherlands is that nurses show leadership by empowering patients. And we see more nurse-led clinics coming up, especially with nurse practitioners who are in the lead. And nurses are more accessible for patients than the doctor is. Yeah, that's very interesting. And I think for us at Medicines for Europe, we work a lot on policies and health policies around Mm -hmm. the use of of off-patent medicines and Mm -hmm. the opportunities that that brings to patients. And I think it's something we've seen over the years that where either hospitals or health systems have adapted off-patent, either generic or biosimilar medicines, that has generated savings for the system. And where we have seen the, let's say, successful policies has really been where savings are thought through and invested back into the system. And so we've seen a lot of examples from around Europe where the savings used or generated through the use of biosimilar medicines are invested, let's say, into hiring more nurses or into improving hospital equipment or setting up programs or clinics that can support the patient or their families. And so have you experienced this kind of, let's say, reinvestment or reallocation of resources back into the system that ultimately can support you then? I know, Hanukkah, you said in your uh, rheumatology clinic, you have a lot of experience with biosimilar medicines throughout the years. So is this something that you've or that you've discussed in your practice? Well, it's something we have discussed, but we haven't seen uh, results, let, let me say that. I think it's not clear what nurses do in this change to biosimilars. Eh? Uh, nurses are doing all the work, but it's not seen by the insurance companies. They only say, well, we see this medication is getting cheaper, so we pay less. And we don't see the money come back to the hospital or the outpatient clinic get more nurses, but we had a lot of work for it to do because we had to inform patients and help them with well other devices or devices which looks different or talk with them when they had questions. So there was a lot of work for the nurses, but it's not nowadays in our hospital. And I think in the most hospitals in Netherlands, we don't see any reimbursement on it, unfortunately. Yes, that's interesting because it seems to me then maybe the different actors are operating in silos, maybe by themselves, not connected between the payer community, the nursing community and the broader medical community and also the patients, of course. And so 
What changes do you see that maybe could connect those different perspectives or how could, let's say, the different actors partner together to really value the work of the nursing done there with regards to biosimilar medicines and also to encourage their use so that the situation can improve? Yeah, well, what we see is that nurses are more informed and, well, we do a lot of education and we get education sometimes from the pharmaceutical companies, but also from nursing schools or uh, nursing organizations. So that's what we see. And what we see is that they are able to treat more patients. So that's also a benefit from the change from biologics to biosimilars. And I think When I look back, eh, when the first biologics for Ruma came on the market, it was about 1999, I think. Those days we had to do a lot of work for before we treat a patient with this medication. And nowadays there is the confidence that nurses and doctors do not prescribe biologics for patients who are not allowed to have them. So we don't have to do all this paperwork. So the paperwork was easy, came easier and we can treat more patients because of there are more fields where this medication can be used. So that's a benefit. Yes, I see this a disconnect, let's say, from the challenges and the opportunities. So maybe yes. those two are not meeting in the middle. Adriano, would you like to comment on this? I must agree with Haneke regarding lately there is no increasing resources for nurses, but there is increasing work for nurses. <laughs> and if we want to achieve sustainable health care, we need to invest in creating healthy work environment. And we undergone some studies with the critical care and wages were not on the top of the nurses' priority. It was a good collective. It was a enough supplies and then wages worse. But if we assure enough nurses and enough supplies to provide the quality of care, nurses are happy. And what is really important is respected nursing autonomy. Yes, I can imagine so. And I think given, you know, all of the duties that you've both described to us earlier in this discussion, I think that's very understandable also. I'm thinking, you know, we've talked a little bit about health policy. Uh, We've also mentioned the role of the European Specialist Nurses Organization, ESNO, uh, that you're both a part of. So, you know, how has ESNO been maybe tackling some of these issues? either in terms of resourcing and the evolution of the profession, but also around biosimilar medicines and helping to spread some good practices or some good ideas or policy issues there. What's been the role of your European work, your collective European work? Well, ESNO worked a lot in the past period together with the Medicine for Europe in a promotion of the biosimilars. And our communication guide for switching patients to biosimilars was the first step. And I think it was get huge attention among our members. In between, I published a paper together with Professor Wollner about the nursing education and biosimilars. And we started the revision process of the guide and conducted the study within the project, which brought us to the result of nurses' knowledge about biosimilars. We published that paper in the International Journal of Environmental and Public Health. And the sample was 866 nurses from 11 countries. And our conclusions were that the biosimilar are not so popular and often topics among nurses and that biosimilar should be of interest to future education initiatives. And as ESNO and nurse, we are not satisfied with the nursing education and there is still so much to do in this field. A promotion of biosimilar and educate nurses of advantages of using biosimilars. Yeah, Hanukkah? We are now working on the biosimilar guide. I think it's very important that a lot of nurses know about this guide because even if you are not working in a field where a lot of biologics are used, I think it's important for nurses to know what biosimilars are and how people are treated and why we switch from originator to biosimilars. I get a lot of mails and questions from nurses from other departments about these things. And I think it's very important that we spread information about this medication to all nurses. We try to do that to inform nurses by conferences, doing poster presentations and that kind of things about the guide. 
So we hope to inform a lot of nurses about the different possibilities and how to inform patients about biosimilars. Yes, for sure. And I know from our work at Medicines for Europe as well how valuable that is. So I would thank also both of you and Esno for that contribution within your community. And so I think maybe more, you know, moving now to the conclusions of this discussion, I think some of the topics that we've raised have been very interesting in terms of the challenges for the community and the health workforce more broadly that are very acute. Now, let's say following a intense phase of pandemic and shifting ways of working and supporting one another and sharing information. I think from the policy perspective, we often are involved in discussions about what can be done more, what needs to be done on top. Let's think of a new law, a new policy, a new measure that we can introduce. But maybe sometimes the easiest is to focus on the existing resources that we have and to think about how we build on those. And so in that sense, is there anything you think that we're doing in the health field that maybe we should pause and think about or rethink and maybe change the way we do things, if there's one thing that would come to your mind? I think that we have to continue on this path with promotion of biosimilars and share it to among nurses. I think that's really important. We have to work with university regarding the curriculums of nursing education and implement biosimilars as obligatory. And we have to find a way how to show the benefits of biosimilar in saving hospital budget and redirecting that budget to other patients and other hospital issues. If we aim to have a health for all, we have to find a way to reduce the costs without reducing quality of treatment. And I think that biosimilars leads us to this direction. Thank you. And Hanika? I think Adriano is right with what he says, but I think we also should take interest in, well, prescribe all patients the dose which is researched uh, when they try to get it on the market. But a lot of patients can uh, use less dose and get even and they don't get a flare. So when we talk about savings, we can also do more research at the value of this medication. We do now do research to stretching the medication from uh, once a week to two weeks and people are happy with it. So I think that's also important to give patients the confidence that their medication is also working when we're giving them lower doses. And I think nurses have a big role in giving patients confidence and help them with their self-management support. Yes, I think that's very true and also very evident from this discussion. I think this has been very enlightening and really a pleasure to hear from both of you from your perspectives, how the profession and how your role has evolved also through, I mean, arguably one of the most challenging times in the healthcare sphere over the past couple of years. I think I would like to thank you, of course, for your contribution to this discussion, but also more broadly for your work and your advocacy at the EU level. It's really impactful and it's really our pleasure to partner with you on bringing better health policy to patients. So I'd like to thank you uh, for that and also for sharing your discussions with us today. So thank you very much and we hope to hear more from you in the future. Thank you for the invitation. Thank you.